Hi, this is a follow-on video to 06 Revit for Quantity Surveyors, Keynote and Assembly Code, and also to 06 Revit Quantity Surveyors Pre-Processing. In those videos, uh, you were shown how to add QSIDs to your building information model um, through Keynotes, Assembly Codes, and in 06 Revit for Quantity Surveyors through the Comments parameter, um, but it could be in any available parameter that you want to add your code to. Um, in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to add codes um, via BIM interoperability tools. So if you navigate to Autodesk www.bimminteroperabilitytools.com and available in BIM interoperability tools is a number of different, um, I suppose, add-ons. The add-on we're looking for here is Autodesk Classification Manager. So if you select that one and it should navigate to classification manager in a few moments once it does select download and once that downloads run that file what will happen is once you run the file it'll add in an additional tab there and an add-on tab into Revit 2018 2019 whatever Revit you're using and um, you'll get the full functionality in respect to Kobe extension configurator model checker and what we're looking at today, Classification Manager. As well as the tab, you'll get the program files. In the program files, in this case, it's gone into C, Program Files, x86, Autodesk, BIT, 2018, Classification Manager, it could be 2019. Um, and in Classification Manager, you get a number of Excel databases. Let's open up possibly Classification Manager Database US and see what's in there. So it's an Excel spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet that includes a number of different tabs. Each tab represents a different database. Now this is US applied, so it'll have the uni format, which is the cost code breakdown structure, the master format, specification tables, as well as the omni class tables. They are cross coded, a little bit different than the keynotes and the assembly codes because as well as the database itself they'll be cross-coded to the other databases in that spreadsheet so take for example in the master format uh, and you code a particular object any associated code in the uni format and the omni class in this case <coughs> will get populated as well once there's a parameter set up for that element i'm just going to close that down as well as those files, you've got the UK database, and that includes the uni class, but you've also got an ability to create your own custom database. So I'm just gonna open that. It's essentially a, a number of tabs, but most of these tabs are blank. You've got some instructions on how to set up a, uh, a custom database, but ultimately what you're doing is you're following the same process that's in that UK or US database, Excel database. Um, and in this case, you wanna set up one that's more applicable to the jurisdiction that you're working in. Because I'm not working in the US or the UK, I'm working in Ireland, I've set up one more specific to Ireland, so I'm just gonna close out of that. Um, I've done so, and I put it in my keynotes and assembly codes, uh, interoperability tools, and here is my classification manager database, DK, my initials, custom. So if I click my first spreadsheet, spaces is blank, but my first spreadsheet there, national standard building elements, that is what I had coded in the keynote. NRM1 in the UK, again, follows the same format as the UK and US uh, databases that come with Classification Manager. Um, I have a new one here, International Construction Measurement Standard, and another one, our ARM4, um, Agreed Rules Measurement 4, in Ireland for a bill of quantities breakdown. So I'm gonna keep that, that open. The next thing I need to do is go back into Revit and I need to set up those properties as parameters. Now what I need to do is I need to click manage. I need to go to shared parameters as if I was setting up a new user defined parameter, same way. I'm gonna set up a new group. I'm gonna call it classifications. Click OK. Within that new parameter group, 
I'm gonna set up a couple of new parameters. Now I'm gonna add, I can add all the different parameters that are in my database, but for this example, I'm just gonna choose the ICMS. So choose the ICMS tab, and what I need to do is essentially word for word, add these two parameters here. The parameter for number, the parameter for description. So whatever, whatever, whatever was input in your custom database in those two fields, select by copying, Oop. I click copy and insert as a parameter. Very importantly, put it in as a text parameter, otherwise it won't work, and click OK. Add in the description parameter from that database. And in it goes as a text parameter, and click OK. So those two new shared parameters are included in my shared library of parameters. I'm gonna click OK. Now I need to assign those shared parameters to this particular project. So warehouse detail post changes. Click on project parameters again, just above share parameters. And I'm gonna add a share parameter. Click select, click first maybe number. Make sure I check all objects. Make sure that they're all selected here in terms of categories. That's classification ICMS underscore B dot number and then it's a text parameter, click OK. Again, add the description, share parameters, select, there's the description, click OK. Again, it's gone in there, check all, show all, make sure everything is OK, click OK. So hopefully now, maybe if I scroll to, or if I navigate to my BIM model, and I select maybe one of the external walls, scroll down and see is there a text parameter has gone in there, and there is with those two fields. Now that's very important that those two parameters are included before I start my coding. Now, the next thing I need to do is scroll down to my takeoff. The last thing I did was add two assembly codes. The assembly code and the assembly description are two parameters, assembly code and assembly description. Um, I'm going to click insert and I'm just going to take them out for a, I don't need them right now. So I'm going to return them back to the available fields and I'm going to add in those two parameters that I added in a few moments ago. So they should be available there in the available fields. Bring it across, bring it across, um, or maybe move them up a little bit just above material name and put the number before the description. So there they are. Click OK and they're in here in my schedule for classification number and classification description based on the ICMS. So now I need to navigate to my BIM interoperability tools and I need to assign this database first to the classification manager. To do that, over on the left hand side, I click Setup. I will now, once this comes up, this BIM Interoperability Tools Classification Manager, I'm gonna to browse to, to where I saved that custom database. Before I do that, I need to make sure it's closed. I don't need to save it. Um, there it is there, it's in my, it's in this particular folder, but it could be somewhere else, obviously in your, in your desktop. Click Open, click Finish. So that now is set up to utilize that database in BIM Interoperability Tools Classification Manager. And now I can assign pretty much the same way as I assigned the assembly codes and keynotes. Let's take, for example, um, these internal doors. So I can highlight the doors. This was the previous coding based on the National Standard Building Elements. I'm gonna put an ICS code in there, starting with the number. And it'll work the same as the assembly codes. Once I code the number, the description will go in. In this case, now I need to go to assign. It'll open up. And the last column here in the element tab, I'm gonna click that. And then I get my databases that were essentially in that Excel spreadsheet. I'm gonna to navigate to ICMS. I could set up or I could classify the NRM1 so long as I set a parameter for that NRM1 but I haven't done that, so I'm gonna click ICMS. 
um, and let's try and navigate to this code. So it's an internal door, I believe, one, um, 1.04, architectural works, non-structural, and internal divisions, and I'll select internal doors, and click assign. Once I've done that, and I'm happy with that, because everything I highlighted to be selected has gone in there, element or code 1040040060 internal doors. And I can code my entire model in the same way as I might have done with the assembly code but utilizing BIM interoperability tools. A little bit more custom given the fact that I can see that that's an actual parameter called the ICNS number and ICS description. What happens then downstream is once I export this file, those parameters are available for me to filter and create breakdown structures in my cost program. Thank you.